in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen. You don't read about the times he was robbed or people trying to rob him on his journeys. He could have been killed. But in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness. Painfulness. You know what? That sounds like pain, don't it? In watchings often. That's all I pray. In hunger and thirst. In fastings often. In cold and nakedness. Praise God. Romans 8, 18. Here's what we got. The thought. Romans 8, 18, Paul said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'll have more reading later on that I'll read in the preaching part if I guess. But let's go to the Lord in prayer again and ask his direction, ask his blessing, ask his anointing for myself to speak it and also for yourself to receive it. Know your ears with our side, or eyes with our side, as you may see how you see it. Anyway, let's ask Jesus tonight. Praise God. Lord, we love you. We appreciate you, Jesus Christ. You are head of the church. We honor you for this. You're the head of the body of Christ. We're just members in particular on this earth. Lord God, we love you. We appreciate you for the plan of salvation that's been instituted for the high priest that we have in heaven that's in the presence of God for us, that prays for us, that intercedes for us. God, we believe your word. We believe what's written. We believe about the Son of Man that suffered the agonizing things that he went through. We believe that you glorified him in heaven, gave him all power in heaven and earth. And God, we believe tonight that we are under subjection to the Son of God as members of the body of Christ. And Lord, we submit ourselves to you as humble as we know how. Because we know without you we can do nothing. In Christ, that's what you said. Without me, you can do nothing. So we know that. Lord, there's nothing that we can do that amounts to anything that's worth anything. You, even yourself, what you walked in here in this place, you said if you honored yourself, your honor was nothing. Let's, it goes a lot worse with us. If we honor ourselves, we're nothing. But God, if we can just get your honor, if we can just get you to look down upon us with mercy without all sin eye that goes to and fro throughout the earth, that looks down to the hearts of the sons of men to see if there's any that's seeking after God. Lord, if we can just get your attention with all the millions of people on this planet, that you will look to us with that mercy, that you will look down and grant us the manna from heaven tonight, Lord, and the strength and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and the utterance of the word, the direction of the message. God, we'll be okay. Lord, we ask you in Jesus' name for this. Amen and amen. Praise your holiness forever and ever, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I appreciate the Lord. Fill the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, one thing I never forgot what Brother Olson told me years ago, bro. When I first got called to preach, praise God. You can feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost and you can feel it like fire. Man, you want to really cut loose. But you ain't never studied the Word. There ain't nothing inside. You know, you just stumble and stutter. Even though you feel it. And he told me one time, he says, if you don't have toothpaste in a tube, when you squeeze it, no toothpaste can come out. He said, but if you read the Word of God and study the Word of God, and then when the time comes to preach or testify or whatever, he said, then when the Lord, uh, by the Holy Ghost, puts the squeeze on you, then that, that Word can come out. <laughs> Praise God.
praise God. And when he squeezes, you feel tears come my eyes when I feel that. Praise God. It feels good. It's not tears of sorrow, believe me. Praise God. It's just such a thrill to feel the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Well, we read all the list. The old Apostle Paul, great Apostle Paul. Praise God. I don't see how he went through what he went through, really. I don't. Man, that man's a great man if you look at his life. Praise God. He, when he got called into the middle, matter of fact, before that, he was zealous. And while he was an old Pharisee, he was zealous for God. And he thought he was doing right by persecuting the Christians because he thought they was making a mockery of what God was actually trying to stand for. Praise God. You know what? The Lord Jesus Christ looked down from heaven and saw the sincerity in Apostle Paul. And I can't read the mind of the Lord, but I can guess and suppose that the Lord was thinking, man, now listen, if I appear to Paul and turn him around with the zeal he's got, and once you realize that this is the truth, let him tell you what he'll do. Praise God. When we read, we read a list of things that Paul went through in his life, the things that he confronted, it's hard to imagine anybody going through all that. Five times he said the Jews took him out with a whip and beat his back 39 stripes. Done this five times because he was preaching about Jesus Christ. Now, I might get my numbers wrong, but I'm trying to think of all the things he went through. I think he said three times he was taken out and beaten with rods. Not a wheel, but just a rod, just beating his back with a rod. Three times, because he's preaching about Jesus. Praise God, and I remember reading well account of the story in the book of Acts, how Apostle Paul said they took him out of that city, and they stoned him with stones, and actually thought they killed him, like they did in the Old Testament, you know, stoned with stones, and they died, and they left him live there as a dead man. Praise God, but God didn't let him die. Hallelujah. And Paul is the one that wrote in Romans 8, in 18, he said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Praise God. Now for Apostle Paul to say that, praise God, a lot of us sometimes, even people trying to serve God, are contemplating on repenting and serving God and start comparing in their minds what they're going to lose. They start comparing with the lifestyle they've got right now, with the way they're living right now, they're trying to compare it. Oh, do I want to become a Christian? And there's all kind of things going on in mind Satan uses and, and tries to make him compare and tries to compare his side of the world better than serving Christ. Praise God. And a lot of times Satan wins out on that kind of uh, surmise. Praise God. Hallelujah. And praise God that when a person like Pastor Paul became a Christian, amen, praise God, he, he was fired and zealous for the Lord. Uh, and praise God in every place he would go and preach, praise God. You know, at first he said, nobody stood with me. He said, when I first started preaching the gospel, uh, after the Holy Ghost come to me, uh, after Jesus appeared to me, praise God, uh, he said, praise God, nobody stood with me. Uh, amen, praise God. He said, uh, amen, the other Jews uh, would have nothing to do with me. Uh, amen, praise God. They thought I'd have lost my mind. Uh, and praise God, he said, but I would go to the Christian folks. Uh, and because of the way I and, and treated them in the past, he said, none of them trusted me. They thought I was just trying to find a way to get to them. Amen. To do damage to them. He said, nobody stood with me. I was alone. Praise God. And here he is, a Christian serving the Lord. And he's going through this. The Jews got where they wouldn't have nothing to do with him. And you're talking about a man that was high in the Pharisee religious order. You're talking about a man that was trained by Gamaliel. Amen. One of the most high religious teachers of that day for that religious order in way. And praise God, and they thought, amen, he was in one of those high religious orders, uh, amen. Uh, and praise God, and he personally knew the high priest of Israel, uh, amen, and he gave him letters, uh, amen, to go out to other places like Damascus, Syria, amen, and other regions, uh, and take in Christians, uh, amen, praise God. Uh, so he was a high-ranking Pharisee. 
Praise God, but now he's serving the Lord Jesus Christ and nobody has nothing to do with it. Amen. Praise God. Apostle Paul, amen, is the one that wrote and said, you can't compare. He said, there's no way with all that I've went through. The five times I was beaten on my back, amen, with that suffering, that can't compare with the glory that Jesus is going to give me when this is over with. Amen. You know why? Amen. Apostle Paul wrote a lot, amen, about what's going to take place when Jesus comes back. Praise God. Amen. He said, the dead in Christ are going to rise, and we are alive and remain. Shall we call up to meet the Lord in the air? Amen. We're going to have a glorified body. Amen. We're going to have a body like unto the Son of God. Praise God. Paul knew this. He understood it. He saw it. And praise God. So he would think all the five times I, I was taken out there with 39 strikes. Hey, that was something to think about. Amen. But I can't even compare that with what the Lord said he's going to give me. Hallelujah, God. Amen. Praise God. And after he would get through healing of that back wounds. Amen. From those stripes, those scars on his back. Amen. Jesus ain't the only one that's going to have scars on him. Amen. Praise God. Apostle Paul had those scars on his back. Hallelujah, God. And then other time he'd be out there preaching. And they would take him and beat him with a rod. Amen. Leaving bruises on him. Praise God. And he, he still thought, I can't compare this. I can't even compare this. Praise God. The suffering can't compare. Amen. With what we're going to re receive of him. Praise God. I, I'm talking about if he could compare it the way he was worrying that. Uh, amen. That some of this stuff would have stopped him uh, in his tracks and said it ain't worth it. Uh, some of this could have been said. Uh, it ain't worth living for the Lord uh, to be treated like this after you become a Christian. Uh, and praise God. Uh, amen. Praise God. And when they took him out there. Uh, amen. And drug him out of that place. Uh, amen. Praise God. A bunch of evil, wicked people. Uh, amen. With hatred and envy in their heart lies. Uh, amen. Praise God. Jesus wasn't the only one to see this from people. Uh, amen. Praise God. They drug him out there. Uh, amen. Praise God. And they grabbed him up some stones. Uh, and Paul had nobody to stand with him. Uh, amen. Praise God. They took those stones. Uh, and they began to throw it in and hit him in the head. Uh, and hit him in the side. Uh, amen. Praise God. If you ever been hit with a rock, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and they picked up some big stones. Uh, and they throw it as hard as they could. Uh, and it would lash. It would cut. It would bruise. Uh, and he would just try to cover himself the best he could. Uh, and they would keep throwing. Uh, and throwing. Uh, and blood pouring out of him. Uh, and praise God to find somebody hit with a blow that knocked him unconscious and left him laying there in a pool of blood. Uh, as a dead man. Hallelujah. Praise God. And Paul wrote. Uh, he said, there none of this can compare uh, with what Jesus is going to kill me. Praise God. When this is over with. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, for a man that saw these things, for a man that absolutely, literally saw Jesus Christ, and that he communicated with, with him and angels, praise God, to say these things, friend, we need to take their testimony at heart uh, and realize there ain't nothing worthy to compare with the glory that Jesus will give us if we're faithful uh, and obedient. We shall eat the good of the land. Uh, hallelujah to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. And hallelujah, God, praise the Lord. Even old Stephen could say the same. Praise God, hallelujah. Well, he was serving Jesus and testifying to him. Hallelujah, God, they took him out there and gnashed upon him with their teeth. You ever had anybody bite you? Praise God. There's a bunch of evil people run up on him and grab him. Amen. Praise God. And just beat him as hard as they could. And that hurt. And then they had wasn't enough. They drug him out of the place. And they said, let's kill him. Let's get rid of him. Praise God. And took him out there and began to stone him with stones. Praise God. Even old Saul Paul at that time was one of them. And they stoned Stephen with stones. Praise God. He lifted up his eyes toward heaven and said, Lord Jesus, Amen. Lay out this end of their charge. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. You know what that tells me? Amen. That a vision appeared to Stephen while he was being put to death. That Jesus Christ, amen, praise God, hallelujah, and went through the same thing while he was down here. And praise God, and he saw Stephen with the same type of spirit. I love your enemies. It's what Jesus called in his word. He said, love your enemies. Do good to them that despitefully use you and persecute you. 
you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake and the gospels. He said, for great is your reward in heaven. Hallelujah to God. For so did they, the prophets, likewise. And praise God, he said, amen, can it blessed when they persecute you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So Jesus saved Stephen. Amen. He uh, sat on that right hand of God and judged. And Stephen saw the vision when he stood up. Praise God. Hallelujah to God. While well, he was being stoned. And Stephen was thinking, Amen. Probably the similar words. This can't compare. This can't turn me around if they let me live. This ain't going to stop me from serving Jesus. Because I it's like Paul said, uh, there's a crown of life uh, laid up for me in the heavens. Uh, and praise God, even Apostle Paul said uh, about this body, uh, this tabernacle that's going to perish and die, that's going to go back to the dust. Uh, he said, that is in heaven right now, uh, another house. Uh, amen. Praise God. Uh, he said, we're just living in this body. Uh, amen. Praise God. A flesh. Uh, amen. Praise God. But he said, the Lord uh, has another house uh, in the heavens. Uh, put all that immortal. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just like Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will never die. Hallelujah to God. Praise the Lord. And you can't compare it. Compare the suffering and the glory. Praise God. All that suffering, all they went through. When I first got in church and you read that, you think, oh my Lord, if I got enough to stand, can I go through something like but I don't, I'm afraid to go through something like that. Hallelujah. I won't forget that this was on my mind when I first got the Holy Ghost. Real strong. And I was praying in an altar, and I've testified of this before. Brad, I'm going to tell you, I can't describe to you what I felt. But I remember, and I, I used to come into church. And I had couches on my elbows where I would come in whenever we got there and I would pray till they got ready to start the church. I wouldn't talk. I wouldn't talk about other stuff. I went up there, prop my elbows up on a little wooden altar, and I stayed right there. Praise God, my hands raised, my elbow up on that altar. So I prop myself up, uh, and I would pray to Jesus and talk to him and tell him how much I love him and appreciate him for the Holy Ghost. Uh, and praise God, and then it was on my mind. And I said, Lord... I said, I got something I want to ask you. And I think about them people in the Bible. Oh, man, they went through some horrible stuff. Praise God. I said, but Lord, I don't want to lose my soul. And I love you and all this. But I said, what are we going to do if it comes down to that? Some people absolutely deny they even know you. Stuff like that. I don't want to do that. I said, Lord, what if they come to the point of torture? What if they start taking knives and cutting on like some people would have been mutilated? What if they do the evil stuff? Praise God. And what I was thinking about that, amen, what I was right there at that altar, amen, all of a sudden there was such an increase in the power of the Holy Ghost. I mean, it, was, it wasn't nothing that you could open your eyes and look at it and blind you, but you know how a big bright light does you when you turn a light on? You know, I was saying, oh, you just go, you got to cover your eyes up. Well, I was in that, oh, I don't know if anybody was, had me sitting back there watching what I do if I thought I was crazy. Praise God. But anyway, I was praying and I felt such a power of the Holy Ghost so strong that I felt like I was going to pass out. And while I was in that altar, when I asked him that, speaking in tongues and crying, praise God, and feeling the glory of God so strong, I even, it's the only time I've ever done that in any church I've ever prayed in any time that I can remember. But while I was in the altar praying, I backed away from the altar and I remember putting my hand on my eyes they were so strong, praise God. Oh, and it's just like the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, when it comes time, if it comes down to something like that, I will just turn up a notch of the Holy Ghost power. Amen. It will overshadow you and it will protect you. It will keep you and give you the zeal and the drive to go on. Hallelujah. And, I, and those words come to me, praise God, that that's just like the little maker of my power. Praise God. Like there's more. <laughs> Praise God. Well, you know the Bible says the flesh cannot stand before God. 
Bible says you cannot see God and live. That is in his hall of supreme power. You just couldn't stand it. You would die. Everybody that got close to him at all in prophecies and the visions of the Old Testament or knew either one, when they got too close, they passed out and absolutely just like a dead man until the angel of the Lord, whatever, reached out there and touched them. They was getting that close and they was feeling that power. Praise God. You can't compare with the suffering you go through with the glory that God has promised his people when this is over with. Praise God, even all time, we and people in different places where they feel the Holy Ghost. They're able to shout, they're able to dance, they're able to run, they're able to lead, they're able to stand there and cry, speak in tongues, they feel so good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, it feels so good. Hallelujah. But you can't compare. Praise God. The sufferings and the glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's read, I want to read something. Praise God. Matthew 26. I'm going to read two, a place or two here. Praise God. I want you to listen to this right here. Praise God. It was about Jesus. Well, and listen to his sufferings. And I'm going to read you one statement about him, some of his glory. Praise God. Matthew uh, 26, 6 and 6. He said, what think ye? That somebody asked. They answered and said, he is guilty of death. Then, this is what they done to him. Then did they spit in his face. This is why they know Jesus now. And buffeted him and others. Smote him with the palms of their hands. Say, well never mind, I'll just read that part. But they spit in his face, buffeted him, and smote him with the palms of their hands. You can picture this. Praise God. 27, verse 29, Matthew 27, 29. Let's leave, leave, leave this right here just for a second. And when they had planted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. Praise God. And that's not reading about put the spikes in the hand in the part of the crucifixion. But one more place we want to read. Luke 24 and 30 it says this. And it came to pass as he said it meet with them after his resurrection now. He took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Praise God. Look what he could do now. Hallelujah. So you can't compare all that Jesus went through. Even while Stephen was being stoned, the attributes that Stephen displayed was just like the attributes that Jesus displayed while he was being entreated spitefully. When they took Jesus Christ, praise God, when they took him at that time in the other places, I think it said they blindfolded him, got behind him and just whacked him as hard as they could. And they said, prophesy to us if you are a prophet. Praise God. And they would look at him and they would mock him and they would make faces and fun and they would just spit right in his face. And they said, you say you're the king of the Jews. I'm sure they said other words besides just those little recording. Praise God. And finally they took him to the place after they got through beating his back with 39 stripes. After he was so weak he couldn't carry the cross that the Bible said in Isaiah his face was so marred or his vision. He was bruised. His face was bruised and swollen where they had beat him and hit him. And praise God, and they got him into that place and put that purple robe on him. And they took that crown of thorns and they made a crown of thorns and put it on his head and just pushed it down on his head until he cut through the skin of his flesh and the blood just flowed down his face and everything. And they done him like that. Praise God. He was the first one to ever go through this. Now the mothers had him look at. A Stephen had Jesus to think about. Amen. Pastor Paul had that to think about. But Jesus was just there. The first one to ever reach that plateau. Praise God. And they put those crown of thorns on his head. And I guarantee you there was agony and pain. 
and praise God in them. They smote him with a reed, mocked him, bowed before him in mockery, and then they spit in his face again. They mocked him. They had his hairs tied. They spit in his face. He couldn't wipe his face. They laid him out there in front of everybody. They said, y'all say this is the king of the Jews? Uh, oh, come on. You don't want to follow something like this. Uh, and that's the way Christianity has been looked at by the world. Uh, the real, true, blue Christianity uh, is still mocked today. Uh, amen. They don't believe uh, in living right, sanctified, living, uh, living holy before God. Uh, everybody that claims Christianity wants to part of the world. Uh, and that's not the Christ Christianity. Praise God. Praise God. You can't compare the suffering with the glory. You may write it down like Paul did. You may, may leave a listing of what Jesus went through. Amen. But when Jesus come out of that grave, amen, praise God, and walking down that street, oh, praise God, walking along and seeing two brothers that he knew who they was. He walked up there beside them, and they was talking among themselves. He got a little closer, and they was talking among themselves. Oh, I'm not talking about Jesus that was just died about three, four days ago, three days ago. And praise God, and he walked, he said, uh, he said, why are y'all so sad? Why y'all communicating yourself like this, uh, uh, communicating, and y'all so sad? What, what's bothering y'all? Praise God. He said, well, you must be a stranger here. You haven't heard what's been going on in your Jerusalem this last week? Amen. That we thought this guy was a prophet. We thought he was a prophet of God. We thought, sure, this is the Messiah. Amen. Praise God. But they took him and they crucified him. Uh, and we loved him. Praise God. And Jesus walked on. He rebuked him a little bit, gave him a scripture to think about. They still didn't know it was him. Walked on down the road. He let a rock out just walk on. Amen. They was turning into their house. And after he got through talking with them, they were thinking about the word of God and the scriptures. It kind of lifted them a little bit. And they was going home and they said, hey, uh, it's getting late. Why don't you come spend a night with us? Praise God. Oh, man, sometimes you don't never know. You don't never know the night you receive the Holy Ghost. You don't never know the night that you invited the Lord in at the right time. Hallelujah. And when Jesus walked in that place and sat down, I don't know if he's wearing something or not, but I lay over here a lot of times, you know, we all do that. Praise God, they got table. He sat down in there, praise God, they got in there and got the food ready and everything. Praise God, sat down a little white candle light, maybe or something. Amen. They was talking. Praise God. And they had bread laid out and everything, praise God, and Jesus just first one picked up the bread. Amen. Like he always did. Praise God. Now he already done went through it. Hallelujah. He done uh, ascended to heaven. You know, he they told him one time, don't touch me, I'm not here to send it, but now he had. So he ascended to heaven. And he received, he got that glorified body. Praise God. But now he looked just like them. And he sat there, praise God. He took that bread, he broke it. He looked up toward heaven and said, Father, I thank you. Oh, when he said that, they looked at one another, and that man, they said, their hearts would burn inside of them. And while he was breaking that bread and giving thanks, he just vanished right there in their sight. And his body looked just like anybody else's body. It didn't look like it was possible for it to all of a sudden just vanish in the room and be gone. Looked impossible. Hallelujah. No wonder Paul... Amen, understood this, about we, our body will be changed. Amen, and we have another body, and we'll be able to appear and disappear just like Jesus. Uh, amen, praise God, uh, and do what Jesus done uh, while they was in there communing among themselves uh, without going through a door or a window. Praise God, he just fades into the room right where they're at and begins talking to them, uh, and praise God, uh, and Jesus and the Almighty God of Israel made it understandably plain uh, that if we will follow uh, Jesus Christ, uh, we will receive such an inheritance. Uh, we will receive a glorified body. Uh, hey, praise God. Uh, and we will be as God. Uh, amen. Praise God. No death. Uh, no death upon us uh, that God will grant us. Uh, and he said, I give unto you eternal life. Uh, and praise God. And he said, if anybody uh, that will follow me uh, and keep my commandments. Uh, and praise God. He said, if you will believe in me, uh, you will never die. You can't compare being beat five times with 39 stripes on your back. Praise God. We mumble a lot of times about
of things somebody says about us. Praise God. We got to grow up. We got to realize, hey, we may suffer some things, but be prayed up and be close to God and be in tune with God. And if it comes that way, keep in your mind, this is not going to last forever like this. When Stephen was being stoned, friend, it hurt. When they bit on him with their teeth, gnashed on him, it hurt. But he had his mind, this ain't going to last forever. Praise God. And sure he did. Hallelujah. Paul thought the same. Amen. No wonder the men of God that loved God, that was close to God, understood this enough. They was willing to take abuse if it takes it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's stand. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That Jesus in heaven.